Dear Nana Talma, I hope this letter finds you safe. I regret how we've fallen out of touch. You've always been there for me. Reading to me every night when I was little. I'm amazed how you keep the farm running on your own. The disappeared have begun returning. She will come back to us. I know it. I've started losing pieces of my day. The memory of it. The intent. I want to come home. Say, Nana. When did the birds go away? Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us today. Uh, I, as always, am Suzanne, brand manager for Fellow Traveler. And today I am joined by this, yes, this side. I'm never sure which way my camera is uh, set up, but this lovely person, Koshan. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Are you, are you hosting me? Is that? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> doing this cool. streaming thing and you're here it's all good <laughs> i don't Thanks know I'm for just, hosting. yeah i'm not gonna think about it too much um so if you guys don't know koshan is the sole developer of memory of god which created the stillness of the wind which is a lovely story of life and loss which came out this past week Ahem, excuse me so <laughs> We are here today. You are very welcome, whether you are watching on Twitch or on Mixer or even on Steam, which I do have open as well. Um, if you have questions that you wish to ask, this is kind of our fireside chat AMA with Memory of God. Um, I, I feel silly calling you Memory of God. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's so. It's such a silly name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't it think it's never a silly been. name. It's that it has so much gravitas that it seems yeah. like it's like calling someone your royal highness, which I don't understand how people do, <laughs> <laughs> even for royalty. So yeah, I know, I know. It, it, it's a, it's a long story how I, I ended up with that name, but uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't intentional. It's kind of an accident. But, uh, I actually yeah. so uh, Dogginson is in chat, and apparently they did not know that this game had a single developer. And I know that other people have contributed to the story, but you were the single developer of this game. Yeah. Um, so I did everything except for the writing and the music mm -hmm. and the sound design. Nice. So th those were contracted out, but everything else was, uh, was me. Yeah. Pretty cool. No big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, it's you. You definitely sacrifice some things um, by spreading out like that. Um, mm -hmm. You obviously you can't be as good as someone who, you know, specializes in those fields and like works with other people who also specialize in their fields, and they come together and they make something that's, you know, super good in every in every area. But um, you know, it, it comes in handy because you 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 know what you're doing and you you. Um, you have a you have a grasp on everything so mm -hmm. everything kind of just feeds into each other and everything just like just works together because you're doing it all yourself um yeah. for me as well it also because i'm i'm not particularly good in any one area but i can do a lot of things kind of okay um it means that like the scope is kept within reason because um my programming skills are, are terrible so if there was a feature that I would want to do, but it is really complex, I would just not do it because I can't do it, right? And yeah. it would have to, it would take me like so long to do something that's that's actually complex. Um, so because I'm such a bad pro programmer, that actually keeps the game quite simple, which I think is a good thing because it means you can focus on the actual game as opposed to getting lost in like technical 
systems and all that stuff so yeah and, and it also keep like the development time down and the, the budget and everything so keeps yeah. things sort of focused in on what what makes exactly. sense right now for us to get done exactly yeah I feel like that ends up being it varies of course but it ends up being relatively a thing that happens a lot in indie game development um, especially you know we keep hearing about one person two person three person teams that manage to do so much with the combined or one person's knowledge it's an mm. impressive feat every time though yeah i think it's getting less impressive with, t- with <laughs> time honestly i think that's so sad <laughs> it's still I, I, impressive I, know, I think there's so many there's so many people who are doing amazing things yeah they just because the technology is so much more accessible now right and and there's so many tutorials you can you know just go on youtube and get free tutorials for anything yeah. you want is this becoming uh, is this the incredibles where when everyone's amazing no one is amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of <laughs> i mean i think like five years ago you say you're solo developers oh my god now it's mm-hmm. like you're a solo developer it's like yeah so is everybody else yeah. you know um i don't think it's that much of a an advantage these days and i definitely think like people are still going to judge your game based on the same standards, right? Whether it's one person or whether it's four people or whether it's 20 people. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just a, one way of doing things. Right. I, I think it's just like personality wise. Some people prefer to work alone. Some yeah. people prefer to teams. Um, so I, th- I think now it's, it's more of an option. Whereas before, maybe you had to work with other people in order to make a game. But now, you can choose to just learn all the disciplines and make something quite simple yourself or, you know, specialize and team up with other people and then make something maybe a bit more um, flamboyant or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, if you don't have to, collaboration is great and all, but if you're in full control of a project, there's something nice about that as well. Yeah. Even with all the possible limitations it might come with. Yeah. And it's something that, um, I definitely enjoyed with stillness. You know, mm-hmm. it was just, there was no external kind of anything shaping it. It was just, I want to do this, so I'll do this, you know, and it's me directly implementing it. And, and so it was just a very streamlined process and it, it, was, it just works really well for me. Personally. Yeah. Um, some actually, Tabs Justin in the uh, chat of Twitch is asking if it was more challenging than to develop for different platforms because this game is out on PC and Switch and iOS. Yeah, yeah, yeah way more challenging. Um, I underestimated how much <laughs> more challenging um, it would be. Um, there's just there's just so much that you have to consider when you're thinking about three different platforms. Um, all with different control schemes. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's it's really difficult if you're not fully designing it for that from the start, which I kind of was and kind of wasn't. Mm-hmm. I, I I knew they were, they might end up on those platforms, so I had it in the back of my mind, but I wasn't designing systems specifically thinking, oh, you know, how is this going to work on iOS? How is this going to work on Switch? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just kind of assumed it would work and um yeah it in most cases it doesn't and you know <laughs> things have to be redesigned and, and and just the logistics you know of of getting it getting um the code running and all the platforms all the different stores have different rules different certifications all that stuff so, this so. is when it's nice to have a publisher <laughs> oh yeah because not For always sure. like, i mean a lot of the burden still falls on you but at, when any time that you can say hey can you do this awful thing like in yeah store yeah, backhands yeah. are fun guys <laughs> For sure. For sure yeah the fellow traveler like helped out massively on that i didn't mean that to like puff up our own thing like oh, okay. <laughs> no but it's true <laughs> it is true like there's so much stuff that i was like oh, i i don't want to do that and... no there have been times when i've gone into you know i need to do something and start back and i'm like can i hire someone <laughs> yeah. to do this Pass for me that. yeah but yeah um i did want to talk a little bit about some probably the thing that you've spoken already elsewhere the most about the stillness of the wind which is the inspiration for the game so what was the story of how this got started 
<laughs> um, Just a tiny question. You know, well, I mean, like, if you don't know, the 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 game that came out just now, Stillness, was it's basically an extension of where the goats are, which is um, a free-to-play game on itch. Um, so they're basically part of the same story, right? And mm -hmm. it's just uh, an extension of the same story. Um, so <laughs> initially, I think um, I was working in architecture at the time, and I was really fed up. I was living in London. I was fed up with city life, you know, working nine to six every day, um, commuting like two hours every day, which is ridiculous. Um, so me and my girlfriend were fantasizing about just moving away to the country and um, getting some goats. <laughs> and, Specifically um, goats. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I just really like goats. And um, so that was the premise of the game. That was, um, I, ha I had just finished the first game um, that I made ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking for another game idea. And I was like, I'm just going to make that game. I'm just going to make a game that you just, I think I, I think it was going to be an old man at first, but then my girlfriend was, it was like, what if it was an old woman? I was like, yeah, that's great. Yay. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the initial game was just you, you have a house and you have a goat and I think you could pet the goat. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. And that was, that was as far as, as it was going to go. That was all I had in mind when I did it. It was only, it was only supposed to take a month of my time and then I would move on to another one. Mm. Um, but then I, I just like, there was something about it that was really appealing. Um, just being in this like square of yellow with this goat wandering around his hat and his house. And I was like, I, I, I kind of want to keep working on this, you know? So I, I, I kept working on it. And after a while I was like, I kind of want people to care about this character, but yeah. there's no reason to care because there's literally no story. There's nothing, you just, you know, you just, there's no context or anything. Um, so then I started thinking about um, the, the, the story that could go into this mm -hmm. in order to actually have some empathy with the character. Um, and then it just, just kind of, it just kind of went, just, it, it just kept adding and adding and developing and bringing in new influences and um, it just evolved over time. I, I never had any idea of, of where it would end up yeah um it was really iterative it was just playing it oh what's cool what's not cool um and changing it as you go and you know if you get surprised by something you're like oh you know that wasn't supposed to happen but that was really nice and you just turn it into a feature and that, mm. that's basically how the, the game was made very ad hoc you know yeah very, um, unplanned and and um quite chaotic but um definitely fun i think there, there there are a couple of ways to make games right one is um that way or the other way is to kind of design it all out in your head mm. on paper do the whole design doc, plan it all out and then just implement it nah. um nah. i think i could i could never do that who's you know, that organized i, I, I think don't know <laughs> start hacking things together prototyping and then playing it and say like, oh yeah that's cool let's go with that and let's just let it take you it's actually kind of amazing that such a, oh, I didn't mention this before, but I promise this will be a no spoilers show yeah. today. We will not reveal anything about what happens in the game because I was going to mention the, the story, which is so emotional and deep and sad, <laughs> um, how that was formed over time in that sort of, as you say, ad hoc way. Because a really, yeah. like a clear narrative came out of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, as soon as I started thinking about the story, I kind of knew what I wanted to happen. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, there's a certain structure to the to the um, to the narrative that's the same in Goats and Stillness. Um, and that, that's that's um, I knew. That, that's what I wanted to do with it. Um, so the actual story, I got um, a guy called Michael Berto to write the letters in uh, the original where the goats are. Mm -hmm. um, he, so he he took like my general. I kind of want these letters to do this, 
And so he just wrote a bu bu bunch of letters and, uh, you know, invented the characters and the, and the plot lines and everything. Um, and he just sent them to me and I put them in the game and I was like, well, you know, it's good, but, you know, we need this to match up with this, this uh, whatever's happening in the game at this point, blah, blah, blah. And we just went back and forth. Um, it was essentially un um, mostly unchanged from what, what he sent. Um, and then in stillness is is pretty much the same. I I got Michael Bitter again to come in and um, just do the whole draft of the of the narrative um, and all the characters. And it was important for us to um, keep the world consistent, mm -hmm. but um, not have the same characters. Right. So the idea yeah. was that um, because family is such a strong theme in the game that. Um, the characters in uh, the stillness are actually descendants from the characters that you experience. In That's Ghost. right. I but I was um, so touched when you told me that that Talma, the main character in the stillness, is Tikva's what great 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 granddaughter yeah. or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah, I mean, we just thought that was nice to kind of uh, keep the keep the worlds connected, um, but also distinctly different because um, it was always. There was always going to be a bit of confusion about, um, you know, is stillness a sequel? Is it is it um, you know a new game? Is it just a, an expanded you know reskin version of where the goats are? Yeah. Um, and I think I think in the beginning it was it was meant as more of a, a just expanded version of goats, but as time went on, it was clear that actually we want to um, just do a whole new game, but based in the same kind of um, yeah. world as goats and, and keep the same and just develop the same themes and uh, things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was the process. It, it was very interesting for me to work with um, writers because it's something that I, I can't do at all. Um, and so it's very difficult for me to explain what I want. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of relied on them to, to take my kind of very general broad guidance mm -hmm. and just have fun with it and just make up their own things and then send it to me um, um so later in the development i actually got a guy called harold um hagen or hagen i'm not mm -hmm. sure probably hagen, um to come in and basically take uh, michael berto's writing it and um basically uh, just take it as a base and develop it further um and restructure it change the plot lines around and just make it um just develop it further to so um, everything was just working a bit more uh, cohesively as as the game was developing. Um, so that was that's the final draft you see in the game um, as you play it today. Nice. Um, so there was a development of uh, writers taking over, which I think is uh, is quite interesting. I think it gives it an added layer of depth mm -hmm. because more worked on it. Um, there's just like a lot of things and just the, the style of the game itself is it's it's much more willing to suggest things rather than explain things right so there's yes. a lot of things that are suggested um, but um, aren't explained away and I think that gives it a kind of nice kind of yeah especially um, since feeling. everything that you discover is through these letters that Tom is getting from her family so it's all the most unreliable narrator where in the she's mm. she's hearing these stories being told from her family members and you're like is that really what happened or is that yeah just their version of events or is it is a lot of poetic license taken because the letters read very prettily um a yeah. lot of the time so you're sort of like huh it's never a um it's not like a journal entry it's more like telling yeah, a yeah. story and that was that was that was really that's that was one of the things that on goats I found the most interesting, I think, in terms of the idea it was that um, in most games, you know, you'd play the action hero, you pay, you'd play the guy who saves the world, right? And you would, you would um, be in the center of the action. But in this, you're kind of, <laughs> you're away from everything, you know, um, yeah. you're not, you, you don't know what's going on. You're not seeing it firsthand. Um, you're hearing people's interpretations of what's going on. So, you never, you never actually know what is really going on, you know. Right. Um, and you could say, well, there must be a real reason. But actually, the way that we worked was telling ourselves that there isn't a real reason. Or yeah. if it's if it's not in if it's not in the game, then it doesn't exist, right? There's no like hidden law book that explains exactly what's going on in the game. Um, 
behind the scenes it's like no it's like if it's not explained in the game it's 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 not explained and it never will be explained yeah. but i think that's that's kind of a part of it that you know you can't get answers to everything uh <laughs> in life so yeah <laughs> you just can't <laughs> Um, I, I did really enjoy a comment uh, from Ray in our Twitch chat, which is that this is this is moving to Devonshire, the video game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that was our plan, oh, yeah. and I think I, I think in some way um, this this is my um, you know. Well, I'm still in London, right? I uh -huh. didn't I didn't move away to live with goats I think in some way I was just get, I was back. analyzing that so I could just get it off my chest say, okay um I don't have to do that now because I, I have this game and that urge has been uh, has been uh, has been uh, well, that scratch has been itched mm -hmm. so yeah and I have a great question from Allegra's first mate in Twitch chat which is how did you decide on the artistic direction did the narrative help the help that or was it the other way around did the art come first or the story um it was the other way around the mm -hmm. the art came first um because that's what I was doing and then it was only after, later that I decided oh I need some narrative in this game yeah um so the art the art definitely came first but um the reason for the art style is not because um, I was influenced by any particular um, artist or artistic movement or anything like that. It was purely um, constraints. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not a very good 3D modeler. Uh, so it made sense for me to just do very simple shapes. And also it helps with um, iteration time so I, I don't actually enjoy 3d modeling that much I, I much prefer um just being in the in the code and and um designing the game and the yeah. gameplay um so I, I i wanted to minimize the amount of time that i had to spend in a 3d program um and photoshop so basically what i did i, I created um a texture of a color palette that i found mm. um and i used that as the um, as the texture for all the models in the game so i didn't have to think about colors i just you know i had my palette and i would just you know i could it meant i could do a very quick simple model which is basically you know um, a block mm -hmm. um and i could just chuck a color on it which i knew would fit in with all the other colors because it's from the same color palette and I could get in, into the game in a matter of a minute, you know. So it, it meant that I could be in the game and I could think, oh, I need, um, you know, a pot or something. And I could jump into Blender, make a pot, texture it, and have it in the game in like five minutes. And wow, I, yeah. You know, um, kind of carry on. So that, that, I mean, that was the idea behind the art style. But kind of over time, it actually made more sense just because of the the simplicity of it right mm -hmm. actually has parallels with the simplicity of Thomas life so it, i mean if you wanted to really get into it you could um find kind of parallels between the art style and the narrative yeah but ultimately um the decision was made to go with the art style because of uh, time constraints and because sure um and the uh, art style actually even that that it may have been created for ease it has a beautiful very watercolor uh look to it but i also hear what you're saying that it also it, it shows sort of the starkness of her life it's exactly. simplistic it's yeah the, it's not a it's not the most varied there's not every color on the planet in her world yeah, yeah. it's interesting how that does sort of reflect her farm life exactly yeah so it, i mean it worked out and yeah i think a lot of a lot of the like you you see the final product and you think oh well, how is this done how is that but all of it was um, kind of decided because of external factors and they just kind of all happened to work together merge together at the end to create the final product but um, all of the decisions were kind of made for these just different different reasons kind of left and right yeah. Um, and they just they just happen to work out or work out in the end, which is um, lucky. For lucky, me. yeah, it's kind of perfect. <laughs> um, also, you were talking before about where the goats are, which is essentially the the predecessor 
to this game. It's a, it's a by the yeah. way, it's a free game. It's still available on itch. You could get it today. Play it if you wanted to. Um, but it's that color. The palette obviously stays the same. The art style is, I think, has clearly evolved from one game to the next. But you can see where the inspiration yeah. is. And I know that fans of where the goats are were originally like they were the first few people that were so excited about uh the stillness of the wind because they had played and enjoyed this free game and now a full version a new version was coming out so for fans of where the goats are if somehow they haven't yet played (laughs) the stillness of the wind um how much is it a similar game how much is it completely different oh that's really hard (laughs) <laughs> it's really hard to say. I've had to answer the question a few times yeah. um, and I've never been actually able to do it. Um, I, I think I think the the answer would be the structure mm. is the same. So if you if you've played where the goats are, you know ultimately what's going to happen, right? Um, so it's not a completely new game in that sense, but said that the i think the experience is completely different just because of um the additional mechanics the addition the like larger area mm-hmm. um you know you you have things like um the merchant you you the merchant has dialogue now as opposed yeah. to last time he was silent so um all of these things kind of um I think add up and I haven't had any comments <laughs> I haven't had any comments yet from people who've played Goats and said oh well you know it, it's just it's just like Goats um, as far as I can tell everyone who, who enjoyed Goats um, wanted a bit more right yeah. because even though Goats um, did well for a, a free game on itch um, one of the one of the most common comments was oh is there more or is it longer or you know what else is there yeah so um and that's one of the reasons why astonis is even happening right because um the goats where the goats are what was so successful and there was more to do Mm -hmm. on it um and and for me as well you know because where the goats are was only supposed to be a month-long project in Mm -hmm. the end um i i i cut out so much stuff that I wanted to do, right? I mean, when you're working on the game, anyone, um, I think, who works on games in the chat or I think any creative medium, when you're working on something, it's so hard not to get ideas about mm. other things that you want to be doing. Um, and it's actually one of the <laughs> one of the most common things for um, uh, game developers to face is that they never finish a game because whenever they make a game, they always get an idea for another game, yeah. which seems way more interesting <laughs> than when they're working on And so oh, they God. go and they start a new game and then when they're working on that, they get another idea. So um, in order to like actually finish a game, you have to really keep that in check and say, no, I don't have time for that. You've got to lose it there. Um, so there was a lot of those things that I had with goats. It's like, oh, um, I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that, but there was no time. Right. Um, so when when the opportunity came to make stillness, it was like, okay, I got all my notes. I was like, these are all the things that I wanted to do with it originally, which I didn't have time. But now I have the time, and I have, um, you know, the um, opportunity to do that. So yeah. yeah. Got number one, the most difficult thing about creating anything is that you have to finish something before you move yeah. on to the next project it's so hard to do because your next idea is always the best one but yeah it's it's hard to complete yeah. things it says the, you know, really the person hard. who doesn't complete anything <laughs> <laughs> but also i mean it's like um i think i i heard something the other day where it was like you know making a game and finishing a game are two different skills mm, yeah um and I can definitely agree with that. Like, if you, if you're just um, if you're making games but you're not finishing them, there's a, there's so much that you're not learning by just not. You know, you, you might think it's only like ten percent, twenty percent left. So you know, you, you've done the majority, but you know that ten percent, you know, you can you can leave. Yeah. But actually, within that ten percent, is masses and masses and masses of um, of of, of, of little um, things work to do yeah. yeah and actually you know it, it's well known that that last 10 percent will take you 
90 percent of the time mm -hmm. um <laughs> yeah that's fair yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i wanted to talk a little bit about the music for this game uh oh. there is by the way on steam as well as itch uh itch.io there is a wonderful original soundtrack for the stillness of the wind uh and who was that composed by jack Which taylor jack taylor i wanted to make sure i didn't taylor. i could remember jack i was like oh no i forgot his last name yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um composed entirely by jack taylor so how did you go about having that music created um so again, Jack did the music for uh, Where the Goats Are, and mm -hmm. I was happy to get him on um, the stillness again, um, but paying him this time, <laughs> which felt good. <laughs> Always um, nice. <laughs> so it, <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Um, so initially, uh, when I, I think I had just started Where the Goats Are, and I was, I was on the, I think it was a game dev Reddit or something, mm. and I saw a post where someone had... Um, a musician had uh, had a um, had a job which didn't go well um, mm. for whatever reason, and so he was just give, he was making the music that he created for that. Um, oh, I think nice. it was a game a game that was supposed to happen but didn't. He was just making it available for free because um, he had made it, but it wasn't being used, and yeah. um, so he just made it. So I, I listened to it and I was like, oh my god, this is actually really good, you know. I think it would be perfect. It was like super ambient and it was just like really, um, it's just like really high quality. Like you don't expect when someone's giving away free music. You think, yeah. It's going to sound like free music, right? But this didn't. It sounded like really, really good. Um, so I just messaged him and said, I think this would be perfect for my game. And he was like, okay, cool. So I just went off and made the game and put the music in it. Yeah. Um, which was great because I had the music, the finished final music in the game, like before you could basically do anything else in the game. Mm. So the whole time I was developing it, I had the music in the background. I think that really helped like um, create the ambience and the atmosphere while I was developing it. Um, I didn't have to like make the whole game with no soundtrack and then just chuck a soundtrack on top. Right? Yeah. It, was, it was from the beginning, it was in there. So did it um, influence, not to interrupt, but did it influence the game as you were creating it? I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, not consciously, but it must have because I mean, it was it was in there from almost day one. Mm. You know, it, from a a prototype where you could basically only move the character around. You know, the the music was in there. So, um, I mean, I must have it must have influenced like everything after that, from um, the art style to the uh, narrative, everything. Huh. Um, and I, I think it, I think it, I think. The music fits like really well with yeah. the game. Like you almost don't even notice it. it; just feels like a, a part of everything else. You know, mm -hmm. you don't think, "Oh, this is what it looks like, and this is what it sounds like." It's just like one thing, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I just I just basically made the game, and um, I I messaged him and said, "Hey, by the way, you know, this is the game that I made with your music." Um, he was like, "Oh, that's so cool!" Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so we got talking. We actually um, we're really good friends now. Oh, nice. um but yeah when the opportunity for stillness came around i knew i wanted to get jack back on and do a whole new soundtrack for the game um which, which i did and he was he was really excited to do that as well um and yeah it, it, that was that was interesting as well because the in the same way that um the stillness is kind of um an extension of where the goats are the soundtrack is the same way so the some tracks are like completely composed from scratch and other tracks are actually based on the original tracks but kind of remixed and recomposed and um um just re um composed <laughs> i already said that um but so the so the attention was that when you get into stillness and if you've played where the goats are you will instantly get that feeling of oh okay yeah I'm I'm back home on the farm after being away for years and years you know I'm back home and everything's just, everything's different but um, you know I have these memories of it and that yeah. was that was the kind of the guiding principles behind 
um, the music. Um, so again, it was it was it was it was a balancing act of okay, what's too close mm. to the music of goats and what's too far from the music of goats. Yeah. Right? Um, and again, that was interesting, similar to the writing, because I have no idea about music or or, or um, I'm probably the least musical person you could ever meet. <laughs> um, but again, I find it really difficult to um, to explain what I wanted. But right, uh, luckily, well, so much Jack. Music. I only know this from going to panels because I also am a very deeply unmusical person. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so much of it is essentially just conveying emotion, and mm. especially with Jack's soundtrack for this, it's a wonderfully emotional sound. Uh, all of the tracks are wonderfully evocative. Um, mm. It's also, you, you mentioned nostalgia and how it sounds similar but different from where the goats are. And I feel like that's kind of a core theme of stillness, not to like oh, put, yeah. put my own interpretation on it, but that everything is both the positive and sad and bad yeah. side of nostalgia and it's going back yeah. and forth between those throughout i think that's what's really interesting about nostalgia right i mean it's not it's not necessarily a good or bad thing because it's a bit of both right like you're remembering um positive things but perhaps in the light of your current situation is not as good as it was right so it's that um yeah that that um positive and negative uh, energy with nostalgia, I think is really, really interesting. And I think honestly, um, that applies to the whole game. You know, a lot of people will say, I think people, I don't know, I, I don't think of it as a sad game, but maybe some people would disagree. Um, but I'm I sorry, definitely what? think it, <laughs> it's like, it's but it's in, it's sad in the way that nostalgia is sad, right? Mm -hmm. It's sad because it's happy, yeah. Right, and it it's not like straight up. Um, I think um, I think Rock Paper Shotgun described it as um, goat herding depression simulator, <laughs> <laughs> which I, I thought was maybe slightly inaccurate, but um, but funny. Um, but it, it's not like straight up sad, sad, sad. Right. I think actually right. Ray in the chat just said melancholy and it does. Yeah, exactly. I think that's maybe a more appropriate word. Yeah. For... yeah it, it's, it's slightly more nuanced than just, oh, this is just depressing and, mm -hmm. and sad and everything bad. It's like, no, it's not actually. Um, the, the, I mean, the whole point of the, the project was like to kind of shine light on the 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 smaller things right the the quieter moments of maybe maybe things that will go unnoticed when all, you know, all this crazy stuff is happening but um it's kind of uh, um maybe some like externally kind of the situation is bad but at the end of the day you know everything just is what it is and there's still beautiful moments to be found like no matter where you are what you're doing um, and that was kind of like the, the the core kind of guiding principle throughout the whole thing, um, yeah. which I, I I think and I hope uh, is is um, kind of portrayed in the final thing. Yeah, and the the closest that I will get to a, a spoiler observation is that related to that, there are things that you can't change about yeah. reality <laughs> and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's definitely, and acceptance and peace with exactly. that sort of is, is yeah. I think, a major part of everything. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, Tabs in Twitch chat also says that the playing the game in smaller bursts creates more, uh, creates a, a sort of different experience than in one long set in one session. It's this is certainly a game that you could sit down and play in one session, but yeah. taking it piecemeal maybe gives you you can sort of savor the experience i think so mm. you you taste more of the nuance if that makes sense yeah that's really interesting because obviously when you're making a game you can't really play it yourself right. i mean <laughs> you can i've played the game for hundreds of hours you know but in a different context right that's just testing and, and making sure everything works and um iterating so i i can't play the game now as someone who's never played the game 
can. So yeah, you can never go back. Uh, um, in a way, I'm quite jealous. Um, so it's really interesting to hear. Kind of, I can never go back. Yeah, I can't experience it. Um, I kind of wish that I could play it without having made it. Um, and I, I wonder, it'd be interesting what I thought of it actually. Um, no, but it's really interesting to hear kind of players, different players' experiences and mm -hmm. um, how they played it and and what they got out of it is 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 really really interesting because you know in in development like it's quite um yeah I, I think it doesn't have to be this way but for stillness it wasn't shown to many people at all mm. um so even um leading up to the release only a f handful of people have, had actually played it so i was so nervous that i, I what i was trying to do is just going to completely go over people's heads mm -hmm. you know and it's going to completely miss the mark and no one's going to know what the hell this is and just gonna go all bad um but then as, as soon as i started getting messages from people telling me like that they had really been touched by it and showed sharing with me memories that they have that the game evoked yeah um has been really 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 nice um so uh, you know as soon as those messages started coming it's like okay yeah it was there, there, there was a plan all along it's just like <laughs> every, every now and then you forget about what you're doing especially towards release it's just like it's crazy and you forget you i honestly like when i when when i hit the button <laughs> um i i didn't know what people were going to download and play right. like i was so, um i i wasn't prepared for the emotional kind of uh, turmoil of releasing a oh, game yeah. um and so I, I had I had no idea what people were going to download. <laughs> and play. It was just, yes, it's it was a very such scary a experience. Oh, uh, sorry. I, you think you just cut out? Oh, sorry. It's, I just said it's a very nerve-wracking experience. Yeah. To push yeah, that yeah. Was, to say, here, play with this thing I made. It was it it was so scary. It was the scariest thing that yeah. that I can remember ever happening. Um, and, and it was for weeks, right? For weeks before launch, I just had this like anxiety um, inside. It. And the days before launch, it was just like, mm. I couldn't control it. I just didn't know what to do. I was so jittery. I was panicking, but um, there was nothing for me to do. You know, everything had already been done. And it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was very strange. <laughs> it's yeah, out no, there. Yeah. Just like. Tama, we can't change everything. <laughs> this thing is made. Yeah. It is there. It's done, yeah. It's done. I mean, it's funny when you were talking about how it was so interesting to see people have emotional connections to this thing that you made. The Something that I've seen many people say was actually uh, that it made them want to call their grandmothers, mm. <laughs> which I thought was so sweet and such a nice thing to take yeah. away from this story. So I got this one message of a of someone telling me that um, basically his grandmother is real life Tom. Like she oh lives in gosh. a desert, isolated. Um, they, they visit her every summer, and they they try to make her move to the city, but she doesn't want to go. It was like exactly um, you know what's going on in the game, um, which was um, pretty funny um, to 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 know that something that you just kind of basically invented is actually has real life um parallels with, with somebody's life that is just like yeah it just it's just spoke to them directly right and i think and I, I told him that he can tell his grandmother that you know she's the leading role in a, in a video game now yeah uh, i think <laughs> it's so is sad everyone's like, grandmother and yeah, everyone but, and all of us but why aren't there more, you know, like uh, grandma protagonists in video games? You know? That's a great question. I would like to see more, please. Yeah, I would like more, more grandmas. I very much yeah. enjoyed playing as a genuinely old woman that, you know, she does not run. She does not sprint from yeah. side, from one side of the screen yeah, yeah. to the other. She takes Actually, her time. Funny, on, um, on Where the Goats Are, a lot of people complained that she was too slow. Mm -hmm. they, they said, you know... The, it's a good game, but she moves so slow, and I had to tell you, yeah, she's old. She's old. <laughs> she can't run. Break you know, a she, hip. <laughs> she's she's not some like athletic young, you know, uh, crime fighter or something. She's she's an old lady, you know. Come on. Yeah. Um, I have one final question for you. 
uh, while we okay. have you here today, which is why goats. Why goats? Why goats? What is it about goats? I'm, I don't I'm know. I'm this on you completely. <laughs> uh, have goats you seen are goat? awesome and terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I actually, ha I don't think I had had much contact with goats before making um, the game. Um, but I, I think I was really interested in like the the um, subsistence that you can get from them. Like, oh, yeah. You can, just, you can just own them and, you you know, they, they'll provide for you if you provide for them, that kind of thing. Um, so that was, that. I think that was the, that was the reason because it fits so well with um, the theme of the game, right? It's like you're all the way out in, in the middle of nowhere and it's just you and you have these goats mm -hmm. and you're both reliant on each other and there's something quite beautiful about that. Yeah. Um, but actually, for our, you know, since since making these games, um, I, I've grown really fond of goats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, we actually went um, we went to this campsite where they had goats. They had um, pygmy pygmy goats just wandering oh around, and they were so cool. And you could just like feed them leaves, and they would come up to you, and they would just nibble out of your hand, and you could give them scratches and stuff. Yeah. And then they would just wander off in a little pack, and um, yeah, I just, I just think like they have really cool personalities, and uh, and and everyone likes them. It yeah, seems. cool. I just wanted to know why. Goats. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Um, and also baby goats. I mean, hey, of course. Which yeah. you know, maybe you can have baby goats. I don't know. I don't want to say anything. Um, okay, well. Everyone who was able to join us here today, thank you very much for sitting down with me and having a fireside chat with me and Kushan, who is, again, the sole developer behind The Stillness of the Wind. He made this game, and this game is now available on Steam as well as Itch.io if you play on PC. It's also available on Nintendo Switch and on iOS. So if you haven't yet played it, maybe go and check it out and play as a grandmother who lives on a farm with goats and you'll have to find out what else happens. Um, thank you, Koshan, so much for joining us today. Thank you. And everyone, sorry. I interrupted <laughs> no, you. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> um, and everyone, thank you so much. And we will see you all next time. Bye.